we're back. Hey, hey. Hey, now. It's our commitment, so that's it should be no surprise that we're back with 90s now, still happening and happening again <laughs> and again and again. Season 10, show 12. How are you guys doing? Kelly, Adam, what's going on? We're great. It's I'm so happy to see you. I say this every week, but I truly... True. It doesn't get old. I can tell you. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> I know, uh, Sharon, you haven't heard this news yet. So, and we can probably get back to it, but just a quick, uh, quick update, a teaser, if you will. Um, you were medicated last week and yes. this week I am sleep deprived because the better half had a soccer, uh, injury last night, which Eek. required a trip to the x-ray machines today. Oh, fun. So we can get into that a bit later, but uh, Kelly's probably on about three and a half, four hours of sleep. So I'm punchy. I'm punchy today. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the best show. If you are new to 90s now, this is the exact right starting point. That's what I'm getting from that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and just in case you've gone from punchy to jumpy, we're going to tell you why Courtney Cox is uh, still down to scream. <laughs> this is the look of someone who is pleased with herself by making <laughs> clever associations. Um, we're also going to tell you which rock star never thought he'd do Vegas to begin with and now is booked to go back there in the new year. Is it too soon to say the new year? Nah. No. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Okay. It's just not. Our house has been decorated for uh, Christmas for two weeks now. I still have my uh, pumpkins and uh, all the Halloween stuff up. I need to get rid of that. You got to smash those pumpkins. Bro. You have decayed pumpkins in your household, Adam? Or are they like? Pork? No, they still look great. Okay, great. They're still in pre-pie mode. Exactly. Nice. Well, maybe he's just extending the vibe to uh, our friends in the States who are set to celebrate Thanksgiving. So by sure. the time you're hearing the show, perhaps you are tired of your family and <laughs> you have uh, hunkered down to listen to 90s now. Thank you for that. I uh, want to give a shout out actually to a uh, new 90s now subscriber, Rachel Dixon. Thank you very much. That's right. I said new subscriber. That's commitment. Thank you very much. In Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> That's exactly how she says it. Shane. That's exactly when she will unsubscribe. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Too much uh, Canadian. Actually, Rachel, the uh, the gym that I work out at is um, F45, which you are undoubtedly familiar with. And the owners in our little area are actually Australian. So they're, uh, they're ours now. Sorry. Do they say crappy? <laughs> What's that? Do they say crappy? They say, uh, actually, they're, I love, Australian is my favorite accent by far. Uh, when they describe the uh, exercises when they're going through the, the workout at the beginning of class, uh, if it's something that's going to be a, a burner, yeah. let's say, uh, Liza will say, it's a burner. <laughs> so because we've been at it now for almost uh, two years, I think, maybe just around two years, people are very familiar with that term. Burner. Okay. It's a burner. So Rachel, <laughs> thank you. May this show be a burner for you. <laughs> I don't know where I lost it at the end there. Thank you, Rachel. We appreciate you. Uh, we're going to get into Kelly's trivia, do a 90s rewind to give you some, uh, well, perspective. Um, and we've got news about how um, it'll be back to the big screen for a late night alum. Yep. Yeah, I know. Not yeah. Arsenio Hall, though. Well, no, no. Oh, but you know what? He'd be good to go back. Into I miss a, his show. I love that show so much. That was so a good show. much. Yep. So much. Super cool show. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. How about that? You remember when he had. People um, did that. They, sorry. <laughs> People did that. After. Oh, yeah. They that was like the, a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it back. It was. a. Do you remember when they had new kids on the block come on? Like he had he had new kids on the block come on after some kind of controversy. And I forget what the controversy was. But I remember Donnie Wahlberg, like with the bandana on and the hat, because this would have been like, like, not, like 91, somewhere between 91 and 94, somewhere in there. And like, he was just like super amped about getting their side of the story out. And like, it was cool to see how Arsenio provided that platform for them. And you don't remember what the scandal was? There was some, I, I can't remember what it was, but I remember it was a big enough deal that like they flew to Los Angeles to get their side out. And we got to put the fire out. Get your bandanas right. on. We're going on Arsenio. Yes. But actually, Donnie Wahlberg, <laughs> I think, got in trouble back in the day for lighting. Uh, I'll say allegedly because I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure he allegedly did something in a hotel room that envir in involved fire and or pyrotechnics, and they got in trouble for that. <laughs> so. Well, I would hope so. But it's sort of like a rock and roll rite of passage, too, yeah. you know? 
Break Adam, things. do you have the news? I think it's uh, it looks to be a lip sync allegations candle. Oh, maybe that was it. Maybe yeah, yeah that was it. That was it. That was it. Good job. <laughs> Don't know from where, but it seems to be the uh, yeah, that the reason it. they were on the show. That was it. And then he brought out Flava Flav. Like new kids brought out Flava Flav. That was cool. <laughs> You're welcome. And that was supposed to be a, an accreditation. I think like, a street cred accreditation. Right. Yep. And <laughs> Flava said, uh, or not Flava, but Flav said, yeah, boy. Like that. And they're like, okay, we don't believe it. They do sing. Yeah. <laughs> and he took his giant clock necklace and left. Yeah. Boom. Classic. <laughs> um do you know what a lot of fun facts are going to come out of this one story okay. um that the edge on how uh you two approached making actung baby i think is where we should start the show today because mm -hmm. uh dave evans the edge from you two turns 60 in the summertime Banana. So talk about making 60 cool um but also that uh Actung Baby is celebrating its 30th anniversary mm -hmm. just uh, less than a week ago. By, by the time people are hearing this show, it'll be like a week-ish. And what you two have described with that album years ago, the sound of that album, because it was somewhat different than what they had done to that point, they described it as the sound of four guys chopping down the Joshua tree. <laughs> Joshua tree was like a, like a, a marking point for them, like classic album excellent album but it kind of kept things uh in a similar vein sonically so what the edge has done with this uh, recent interview is that he's given some context to the idea which is that they had to push themselves out of what they'd done to be able to continue to create which sounds complicated because technically if you have something that's working with your fans and working period do that thing you know Mm -hmm. ACDC has done that thing <laughs> and successfully every single time. Um, but when it comes to you too, uh, the edge said that it started to feel restrictive quote. It started to feel like we were being forced to repeat ourselves, or at least that seemed like the logical thing for us to do. So we did the opposite. He went on to say, we doubled down and really rolled the dice again on innovation and doing something very different and outside of our comfort zone. And talk about working. Holy moly. Actung Baby is an excellent album. So taking risks creatively, we all, uh, it's somewhat easy to say for, uh, for a lot of us, you know, uh, but then actually doing it and succeeding with it. That's, uh, that's big, I think. It's such a weird balancing act for bands or artists to, you know, get first, you know, you finally create your sound, you work on it, then you've got this sound, but then if you stay with the sound, then you're out of date and old fashioned and not innovative. So, and then, but then if you go too far out of the box, then you're like forgetting your past and your history and your fans. And mm -hmm. so it's such a strange road to navigate, to find that middle ground where it's like, we respect what we did, but we're going to try this and it's going to work too. Well, it's uh, like I said, it's risky, but it's it's somewhat calculated in uh, in its uh, riskiness because you trust your fans to at least trust you, mm -hmm. hopefully. Right. There are there are some, uh, you know, grass is greeners and I'm like, nope, that's not for me. Yeah. But the idea of creativity in the in the first place is that it sort of evolves. And so you should support your favorite band trying something different in Rockdom, where you live, Sharon, a lot of the time you live there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the uh, hypothesis when they did like discotheque and lemon? I love that song because I loved it. But like we're hardcore rock fans of them. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I think there was that faction of people that were like, whoa, you know, but at the same time, you have an expectation, especially if like with Actung Baby, they've turned a corner. You're like, okay, well, I guess they're trying something even more different now. You know, like there's that. But the idea that it's still the same guys and and that they're growing up too and their lives are evolving, they're having families, they're living their dream and, and doing their stuff. But you have to sort of realize that you might not like every single thing. You know, like, and I bring, bring it back to ACDC for a second. Their formula is tried and true. It's good. Their fans love it. If they, I, I wonder if they tried to do something a little bit different, if, you know, that would be it. There's, right. you know, we've been this many years in with them and it's not a formula. I don't think 
it's just it what it's what works because you don't want to diminish it by saying it's a formula you know mm -hmm. um but i think even bands like the foo fighters if we can bring some now factor to 90s now here the foo fighters i think you rely on something great from them because you have a trust in the band members and and their process and what they're experiencing and how how that'll affect what they're bringing to the table so what's the what's the moral of the story lemon lemon <laughs> exactly lemon is the moral of the story <laughs> love that song so much and the fact is that if you dig into what they were going for which was to sort of expose the grandeur of you know how things can get away from you and by tapping into that the visuals off that tour off the uh, Zuropa tour were like whoa it was huge that was the one I happened to see in uh, Paris oh. name drop uh, <laughs> was Thea Vidal was there grand. too Sharon uh, we were all there <laughs> all of us now Thea Vidal I saw in Chicago silly <laughs> 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 uh anyways I think the point is just trust your bands and you know what if you I think if you like everything a hundred percent of the time then that's you're fortunate sometimes they're going to try something different that may not appeal to you it doesn't mean that they're they're completely off the rails that's how I feel about trivia off the rails off the rails I'm ready for it I'm holding on let's do it <laughs> 90s now trivia bing bong bing bong and pink and yellow today pink and yellow oh very nice um so the first one is in the movies category of uh -oh. 90s I'm ready so uh <laughs> so what'd you say Sharon I'm ready go you're ready to go. Okay. <laughs> and Adam, this week, don't upset Sharon because uh, you didn't use your name as your buzzer last week. So you're right. You wise up. Duly noted. Let's remember that. All right. So movies category <laughs> in as good as it gets. What is Melvin Udall's profession? Adam. Go, oh, Adam. He's um. Uh, what's the English word? He's an accountant. <laughs> what's the French word for that? Or comptable. Oh, oh bien sûr. Uh, no, but valiant choice, Adam. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Sharon. <laughs> Go, Sharon. Private investigator. Also valiant. Also equally incorrect. I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I watched this movie with uh, what's Helen Hunt. Right? Yeah, Helen Hunt and uh, Jack Nicholson, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a novelist. Novelist. Mm -hmm. Yes, because he was peculiar or like eccentric ish. Yeah. So there we are. So now we're moving to, I think this is one of Adam's favorite categories. Uh, he seems to do well in these, um, science and technology. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Sharon, damn it. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> Jumping the gun. Although it's funny, <laughs> this is a science and technology question. But when I read you the question, it's really not. So here we go. Okay. Uh, the former bassist of which band invested in the early stages of Starbucks, Amazon, and Microsoft during the 90s? The former bassist of which band? Are you giving us a name? Yeah, so I need, and actually funny enough, they don't give me the name of the person. Obviously I can't do, yeah, so because that would give away the answer. So I need, I need the band name. It's random, man. So the former bassist of which band invested in the early stages of Starbucks, Amazon, and Microsoft during the 90s. I know I this. I've talked about I this. Ugh. Do you Sharon. Know about you go, Sharon. Pearl Jam. No. Adam. Alice in Chains. <laughs> it, it's not two for one, Sharon. I know, but Alice in Chains was going to be my first, and I realized Jeff Ament never left Pearl Jam, so why would you even say Pearl Jam? Adam, oh. is, it, is it Iron Maiden? No. Oh, Ooh, nice one. Uh, can you name the basis of Iron Maiden, Adam? Two no. minutes to midnight. That's 80s. Sorry. <laughs> it's fresh. Oh, no, Sharon. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, Guns and Roses. Mm. Jeff McKagan. Jeff? Really? Yeah, actually, if you, uh, I read his, did you? I did too. I don't recall it. I, I think I remember that from, uh, from the book. Hmm. I remember, I remember in the book, he talks about martial arts and obviously that strikes a chord with me because I'm also a martial artist. So it'd be Sorry. great if your name was Marsha. Marsha <laughs> the martial artist. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like Marsha's not a ninja type warrior name. You know what I mean? Well, that's, the, that's her best disguise. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Marsha. No 
<laughs> karate chops them in the neck. I like it. Didn't anyway, expect okay. that from Marsha, did you? <laughs> Anyways, who's, uh, who's jumpy to, who's jumpier me or Cal? <laughs> awesome. I'm, ex I'm exhausted today so it might be me all right well let's uh you know, go back to that movies vibe yep um do you remember the character name gail weathers i do you do because it was portrayed by courtney cox and it was in the scream movies mm -hmm. and you know there's going to be another scream movie right Mm -hmm. This is numero cinco, is it not, Sharon? See, si, yeah. cinco. Cinco means five. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> you're welcome. Courtney Cox said that she wouldn't actually play Gail Weathers in the new Scream movie if it was a sequel. How, Mind how blow. Could, how could Wait a be, minute. How could that be a sequel if you're at number five? Wouldn't it be a cinquinkle? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> It's a lot to hear. It also sounded like some sort of medical procedure that I just came yeah, <laughs> that would smart. Uh, what Courtney Cox says, and I quote: "If it had been in the same vein, or if it had been a fifth, yes, I would think that would be insane. But because this is a relaunch and a completely different film, I read it and went, wow, this is fantastic.' End quote. So what she also added was that it was nice to reunite." with some of the old characters, emphasis on the sum, because a lot of them died. <laughs> if I'm, I don't want to spoil Is that any surprises. another spoiler alert, Sharon? Well, come on, four movies later and 30 years later or, or 25 years later, it's, it's on you. Say, come on, Sally. Marcia. Come on, Flancy. Yeah. Um, well, the fun thing is that one of the characters that did survive is Dewey, who was uh, played by David Arquette, her ex-husband. Yep. Wah, wah, wah. On this film? Isn't that how that all worked out? Say it again. Didn't they hook up on this film? Isn't that how it all worked out? Yeah. There was some hooking up. Yeah. The untold story. Coco. <laughs> it produced Coco. Not hot Coco. Just <laughs> baby Coco. Yeah. Uh, she also, Courtney Cox also said that it's just nice when you have this relationship where you can get to work with the same characters over and over, which again, you're, you're getting away from your point, Courtney, because <laughs> that sounds like a sequel. <laughs> uh it or a is sharon or a, a, what would you call it a cinquicle a cinquicle <laughs> whatever the heck that is uh one new element for her character gail weathers is that she's moved up in her career uh and gail weathers is now uh, a morning show host ah uh, sound familiar yeah jennifer aniston her friend also on a show called the morning show mm -hmm. uh but courtney cox actually said quote she has the respect of a job where she gets to call the shots and has an audience that is tuning in just for her end quote well uh we can look forward to this non sinquical <laughs> in uh january because that's when this new relaunch of scream comes out and it's just called scream by the way like not it. not scream sinkweekle. I really would like to trademark sinkweekle. Get the paperwork. I'm ready to sign. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> it has room to grow. Sinkweekle. You know what I mean? Literally. Yeah. Like like five times as big. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we were talking before also about how it's back to the big screen for one uh, late night alum, and that is Jay Leno who yeah. has been uh, tapped to play Ed Sullivan in a movie called Midas Man, which is not about Ed Sullivan. No. It's about the Beatles manager, Brian Epstein. Um, of course, Ed Sullivan was uh, the guy that broke new artists back in the day. And that's how artists were broken then. You watch TV as a family. Just gather around, kids. It's story time in front of the TV. Prior to that, it was radio. Go radio. Uh, anywho, Ed Sullivan's show, the Ed Sullivan show, smart title, was, uh, was <laughs> exactly, was what brought uh, these cool new acts to uh, North Americans, because like I said, it was family appointment tuning, as they call it. Uh, and that's where uh, the British invasion started, because the Beatles' appearance on the Ed Sullivan show in February of 1964 is when it all started. So um, Brian Epstein, manager at the time will be played by jacob fortune lloyd who you may have seen on the queen's gambit the queen i just like saying the name that. did you watch it i did i Loved watched it. some of it 
There's a lot of I watched lot. none of it. None of it, eh? I think none you might it, like, like it, Kel. Territory. None of it. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch some of it, <laughs> which is a different territory. That's yeah. when you watch some of a show. I did finish the morning show. I did too. I did not. Are you in it though? Uh, you- no, I'm like uh, two episodes in season two. Oh, we okay. won't wreck it for you. Adam. We won't talk about it, but I, I will just say though, that did everybody like dies. Ending? Did we like the ending, Sharon? I was like a little conflicted. Well, I th- there's no word on whether or not there's going to be another season. So I'm optimistic despite yeah, the because, fact that everybody dies. Because if they end it like they do, it's not enough. It never could be Kelly. Don't say anymore. Okay. Uh, back to Jay Leno for a second. I was emphasizing the fact that he was making his, uh, he was going back to the big screen because he was in a movie back in 1978 called American Hot Wax. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, is an old school reference to vinyl. And it was the story of Alan Freed, radio DJ Alan Freed. I almost feel like we need to end the show on that. What does one go after hot wax? <laughs> <laughs> they go out for coffee generally exactly. here's another word that i would like to make up with uh sink uh, oh good then week delicious oh you, you might be pushing it okay <laughs> sink week delicious like booty exactly like five times the fun or fergalicious is where yeah. i was going <laughs> i don't think you're ready for this sink yeah <laughs> i don't think you're ready for sink yeah it works See? I mean, it works. I just Adam's said dying. it. So. He can't breathe. <laughs> Adam's like, why did I agree to do this? <laughs> um, I often ask myself this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the new, uh, that Midas Man, I don't have a date on that movie. Do you have it, Kel? I have no dates. Okay. I think it's up in the air. <laughs> it may never happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, you know what? When I was looking up Jacob Fortune Lloyd's uh, uh, info it did say tba oh there we are which is to be announced right so we're all good it says um TBA instead of tbd to be determined i guess right? it's kind of the same thing oh no well, no determined, been determined but not announced yet you're right exactly right. then okay. they're just pda public <laughs> PDA. displays of aggression and then nfl yeah. <laughs> You hear that grumbling in the background? It's not my stomach. Oh, I thought it was. I thought you're still hungry from last week's colonoscopy. <laughs> Can you hear the echo? Echo, echo. By the way, my, my, I think I mentioned last week on the show when we were talking about your uh, medical um, escapade. Situation? Yes. Yeah, that- <laughs> medical escapades. Please <laughs> put it in there. <laughs> uh, so Mummy Alexander, as we speak, is in prep mode. Like it's, oh, it's yeah. tomorrow is the big day, if you will. And I almost called you to give her a pep talk, Sharon, because uh, the last 24 hours, she's been uh, uh, not sink week alicious, I'll tell you. She's been uh, (laughs) nervous quite a bit. Maybe just squeak alicious. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That that, that will probably happen as as she gets down the four gallons of that substance you had to drink. Oh, it's awful. Tell her to make sure that she uh, serves it cold. Oh, I, I told think, her the oh, what, maybe I should tell her that it's, it says so on the bottle, but it, it's really true. <laughs> okay, great. Good to know. Good to know. Good to oh, know. And while we're talking quickly about last week's show, I would like to, um, uh, fix a, a problem maybe that came out of my mouth and Adam, you might need to quickly Google this for me because Sharon brought up, uh, we were talking about Madonna last week and the sex book. And I said, 93, I feel like it came out in 90 or 91 now. So Adam, can you I like how you wanted to bring it up, but you didn't even check yourself. I meant to. It's been a busy week. <laughs> so what did you say? What, uh, when what did, did the sex book come out? Uh, October 21st, 1992. Oh, okay. so I was close you were place. so wrong. I was wrong. I said, I said all the numbers <laughs> around it. I said all the numbers around it. I said 90, 91 and 93. So, yeah. Hey. By the wow. way, um, Madonna is getting so amazing on Instagram. People need to check her out. She's just, and I give her credit. She wears these things that look so uncomfortable when mm-hmm. she's lounging. A lot. And I'm like, I give you, and like Cece Penison does it too, I think. Like she wears a lot of clothing that doesn't seem comfortable, but looks great. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Agreed. Oh, and also just quickly, uh, a big happy birthday to Crystal Waters, who celebrated on the 19th of November. She didn't want to come on the show? nope (laughs) (laughs) Uh, good times Uh, happy birthday crystal 
Um, you know, we mentioned an artist earlier that uh, never even imagined that he would do a Vegas residency. And now he's wrapped one up and he's getting set to go back in June. Who? I'll give you a hint. Roxanne. Is that an 80s song though? Dang. It's a 70s song. Actually. Oh, is it? Okay, great. I didn't even. Do you want me to sing Fields of Gold? That was 93, wasn't it? Was that 93? It was in Madonna's sex book in 1993. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my Whenever favorite sting song was. is in, as Englishman in New York. That's my favorite sting. Oh, song. Oh, yeah. That's a good song. Yeah. What year was that, Sharon? 86? I don't know. I uh, believe, yeah, 87. Okay. I think so. I believe. I'm guessing. Dream of the Blue Turtles, I think. Uh, okay. It says 90, it's 1987. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, he's going internet. back in June, according to the internet, which never steers us wrong. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Only Just ask it, it will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's doing uh, going back in June. Great. So I make your plans. Him. I would see him. I have not seen him in concert. I would love to see him in concert. Same, actually. Oh, wait, that's a lie. I saw him at, um, um, why am I, my brain is just Festival, empty right now. Was it in Montreal? Was it elsewhere? The Olympic Stadium, 1988. Okay. Uh, Amnesty International. Not exactly a festival, but uh, a really great see? cause. But wait, wait, before you go, yes. off of that was Sting, Peter Gabriel, um, Bruce Springsteen. Wow. Um, Tracy Chapman was there. Yusun Nadur was there. Somebody else was there. Somebody else. But it was shared. fantastic. It was amazing. Like Peter Gabriel's uh, stage setup had a spider wall on these arms. That kid, like it was just very complicated. And then Bruce Springsteen came out and I think he was there till like two in the morning, which is Bruce kind was. of against the rules, but yeah. totally typical Bruce, you know? And my wallet got stolen. What? Nice. And it got returned. Somebody who worked at the, um, at the Olympic stadium, uh, I guess lived near well not I guess they lived near me and uh and then called me and said did you lose your wallet the next day I'm like yes and they said well I I have it and I live on this street which was like a five minute drive from my house and I went and got it they questioned me when I got there that's weird that you're questioning you called me yeah okay what's your address like uh whatever it is I gave the and then they gave me the wallet which didn't have the money in it oh but had my ID and everything else so that, that was the positive paperwork. takeaway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you want to do a 90s rewind? You ready for that? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. <laughs> All right. We are going back to 1992. I've just grabbed a rando selection of tunes to take us back there emotionally mm -hmm. because uh, in 1992, we were very familiar with Under the Bridge that uh, took us on a real colorful journey. Um, and actually took the Red Hot Chili Peppers to their next level of success. Told their story basically about uh, growing up and the growing dangers of what actually goes on under the bridge. That very same year in 1992, we jumped into the Daddy Mac and the Mac Daddy when Criss Cross hit with Jump. It affected Kelly's wardrobe. It did. I went backwards. <laughs> she went backwards and big. Can I get that in a double XL, please? Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't need it to fit. I had <laughs> I'm that, also going to need a belt. I had the Raiders jersey, like, you know, with the, and I had the uh, Charlotte Horner, Hornets jersey, both which were worn backwards. Of course they were. It was, my mother questioned my choice. And people also, couldn't tell whether you were coming or going. Eh, yeah, Kel? He's like, why am I doing <laughs> up your buttons here? Yeah. Uh, so we go from jump uh, into the summer of 1992 or at the start of the summer of 1992 with House of Pains, jump around. Jump up, jump up, and get down. Exactly. Pack it up, pack it in. <laughs> Let me bug in. Uh, so flat out into the summer of 1992, here we are again, and we learned a thing or two about honesty from a guy who shared that he liked big butts and he could not lie. <laughs> All you other brothers can't deny that when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Yeah. Thank you, Sir Mix a lot. Baby got back. And you know what else? Just to make this musical buffet even more delicious <laughs> achy breaky heart oh, the yeah. signature hit for billy ray cyrus uh fits very nicely in and around um 
baby and her back. <laughs> and Madonna's sex book. Well, there's that. Um, and think about this, though. Without that hit song, the signature tune for Billy Ray Cyrus, we may never have gotten access to Miley. Granted, her, mm-hmm. her, uh, you know, she was huge and very talented, but um, who knows what could have happened without Achy Breaky Heart. Hey, that's and great. that is your 90s Rewind. Thank you, Sharona. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, friends. thank you for finding us wherever it is that you do we appreciate that you listen to 90s now still happening